A year ago, my home city of Vilnius called itself um, the G-spot of Europe. As you can imagine, that caused quite a stir both inside and outside the country, with even John Oliver commenting on the topic. That's real. That is real. The new tourism campaign of Vilnius is Vilnius, the G-spot of Europe. I think this campaign did quite a bit to help people learn that Vilnius exists, but it didn't go too much into detail on what the city is about, and that is exactly why I'm making this video. I want to tell you everything you need to know about the city I was born and raised in, with the hopes that one day you'll come explore it on your own and have yourself a pleasurable time. So sit back, relax, and enjoy! According to a legend, Vilnius was established by Duque de Menas in the early 14th century after his dream of an iron wolf howling on top of a hill. Whether the legend is true or not, the city actually appeared in writing in 1323 and later in the same century became an important city as it was the capital of what was at the time Europe's largest country. It was a very tolerant city where Muslim Tartars, Lutheran German merchants, Jewish craftsmen, the Catholic Lithuanian and Polish elite and pagan Lithuanian commoners lived side by side peacefully. As the richness of the city grew, more and more palaces, churches and monasteries adorned its narrow streets. Its crown jewel, Vilnius University, was established in 1579 and became a primary center of science and education in Eastern Europe. The prosperous centuries came to a horrible halt in mid-17th century when the Lithuanian-Polish Commonwealth lost a series of wars against foreign invaders that led to the Russian Empire capturing Vilnius in 1795. Throughout the next 120 years of Russian rule, Vilnius was made a backwater of the Russian Empire with a population of as few as 50,000 people at times. The city kept being occupied by different armies. Napoleon's France, Pilsetsky's Poland, Nazi Germany, and eventually fell to the hands of the Soviet Union. The Soviet rule was a time of Lithuanian heritage neglect. However, Vilnius persevered, sustaining its artistic spirit, even while a lot of its historic buildings got abandoned and huge gray apartment blocks were developed. After our independence, the city kept growing, changing and developing every single year, becoming so active, fun, tolerant and modern that I can honestly say I'm incredibly proud to have been born and raised here. The city center of Vilnius consists of five major areas. The Old Town. It's one of the largest surviving medieval old towns in Europe that's developed over the course of many centuries. And thus, it is a place where some of Europe's greatest architectural styles, Gothic, Renaissance and Baroque, stand side by side everywhere you go. The Republic of Užobis. The self-proclaimed Republic of Užobis is our bohemian and artistic district. It's situated behind a tiny river and is full of tiny shops, restaurants, and even art galleries that are all so cozy you'll never want to leave. Schnippischkes. This place used to be one of the dodgiest areas of the city, but then it got redeveloped to our main business district that's home to many banks and internet startups. Speaking of startups, the Financial Times has recently named Vilnius the number one city in the world for attracting tech startups. Zverinas. This district is known to be the greenest area of central Vilnius, as it used to be a large forest where the noblemen hunted. Zverinas feels very different to most other places in Vilnius, as its architecture and atmosphere still resemble the old days. Finally, the new town. This area is really interesting as it's experiencing an incredible redevelopment campaign, making this one of our most hip and cool districts. Vilnius is not a true international metropolis yet, but it's ethnically diverse. Around 65% of the people are ethnic Lithuanian, while 14% are Polish, 12% Russian, and 9% come from one of as many as 128 ethnicities that live here. When you finally come visit, don't be surprised to find yourself interacting with a Chinese restaurant owner, an Ecuadorian IT specialist, a Ukrainian barista, or a Dutch businessman. Even though throughout my travels I met literally hundreds of wonderful people from all around the world, but my heart, it always takes me back to the people in my hometown, who might sometimes be a little cold or direct, but they're always honest. They are the people of the heart. They are my people.
These Days Vilnius is a youthful and vibrant city full of incredible things to do and lots of beautiful nature, since well over half of the city's area is covered by greenery. In the city center, you can find gorgeous parks anywhere you go that are all very inviting. Our city center is very much walkable from anywhere to anywhere, but we also have loads of transportation options, from car hailing applications and taxis to electric scooters and two-story tourist buses to, I know you never expected this, hot air balloons. I don't know if you know this, but Vilnius is one of the very few cities in the world that allow hot air ballooning in its skies. You can literally take off in the city center and fly all over the place, enjoying the gorgeous, gorgeous view. This all seems really epic, but let's get back down to Earth. Even though we have all these awesome transportation options, but nothing beats a good old Soviet trolley bus that was cool even before Elon Musk invented his test. A ticket to ride this time machine barely costs one euro, and it's definitely worth your money. Trust me, I know. I grew up with these things. Since you obviously didn't come here to see me crying, let's move on to something a bit more exciting. Food. Vilnius is home to hundreds of restaurants, bars, and cafes that offer all foods and drinks your heart will ever desire. However, I must be really honest with you. Vilnius used to be a very affordable place back in the day, but after we got the Euro, it became a little pricey. So even though we have all these amazing food options available, you might also want to look into trying some of our delicious kebabs. They're, they're three euro each and... I mean, they could be worse. This, of course, isn't addressed to you if you're coming from Norway or Singapore or Switzerland. You guys certainly won't have to eat no kebabs. You'll be eating fine foods. Okay, okay, okay. Now that we've all had a great meal, it's time to explore. If you're into touristy sites, here are the top five places you definitely cannot miss. Gediminas Tower. This is the most famous of Vilnius's touristy sites that's been looking over our city for over 600 years. Three crosses. An awe-inspiring religious monument from which you can see a spectacular panorama of our old town. Cathedral and the Palace of the Grand Dukes. Two touristy sites at the heart of Vilnius that will inspire even the most uninspired tourists. Vilnius University. Founded in the 16th century, it was the first university in the Baltic states that will certainly take you back in time. Church of St. Anne. It is a prominent example of Gothic architecture that was built in the 15th century. This church might very well be one of our most beautiful. Cathedrals, universities, and churches are all really nice, but there's so much more to Vilnius that you should explore. Do not forget our cultural spots, such as National Gallery of Art, Contemporary Art Center, and Mo Museum, where you'll find enough art to fill your heart's content. Vingis Park. This park is by far one of my favorite places to relax in Vilnius. It's a huge park, literally, in the city center that just seems to never end. Halles Market. This local market was established well over a hundred years ago and is busy with action more than ever. TV Tower. Standing at 326 meters above the ground, the TV Tower is the tallest construction in Lithuania that features a rotating cafeteria giving you a 360 degree view of the whole city. I don't know if you know this, but a large part of HBO's award-winning Chernobyl TV series was filmed in this tiny district of Vilnius. If you want a taste of Soviet apartment architecture, this is your place. There's so much more I'd like to tell you about Vilnius, but I don't think that's a good idea because all the things I could ever see will never match you actually coming here and exploring the city on your own. Do it, you bloody legend, as soon as you can. In the meantime, help me spread the word about the city I was born and raised in by sharing this video on your social media with the hashtag ExploreVilnius and uh, telling your friends how much you know about it. 
Thank you so much for watching the whole video and see you next time.